What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in this video, we're actually gonna use extensions in SketchUp to create a donut with sprinkles. Um, before we get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course that I created to give you a start to finish training in SketchUp. So if that's something you're interested in, you wanna take your SketchUp training to the next level, make sure you check that out at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So the idea for this video actually came from watching a tutorial on another program on Blender. So I was watching uh, one of Andrew Price, uh, Blender Guru's tutorials, and one of his beginner tutorials, he uh, basically creates a donut using a sphere, in, or using a um, torus shape in Blender. And of course my first thought was, well, can I do that in SketchUp? And the answer is yes, you can do that in SketchUp, so let's go ahead and talk about how you can do that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a circle, and then we're gonna draw a second circle off to the side of this one. And the way I got that to stand up is I tap the C key, and then I tap the left arrow key to lock this to the green axis. And so I'm just gonna draw a second circle, kinda like this one, and then we'll delete out this face, click on this line, and we're gonna use the follow me tool to extrude this in a circle. So that gives us kind of our donut shape here. And ignore my default model, I'm not really worried about modeling to scale right now. I will drop this down to the size that I need later. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on this and we're gonna reverse the faces. And so to refer when we reverse the faces, that means that the white face is gonna be facing outward. That's more just a good modeling practice than anything else. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create our icing. And so the icing on top of your donut basically needs to be a thickened part of this donut shape. And so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna use an extension from Fredo 6 called Joint Push Pull. And uh, if you've seen any of my Joint Push Pull tutorials, this is an extension that allows you to push pull curved faces. So we're gonna use this in this case in order to push pull this top part in order to thicken it. So to start off, we're gonna go up to View, we're gonna select hidden geometry. The reason we wanna select hidden geometry is because we only wanna select part of this geometry when we do this. And so what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm actually gonna to go to view, no, camera, parallel projection. And I'm gonna click on front view. And the reason is because if uh, you don't have parallel projection on, then this has um, what's known as perspective, meaning it goes off to a vanishing point. And when you drag a box across it like this, you might accidentally pick up more geometry than you want to on the back. And actually, if you really wanted to, you could probably creatively pick up some different parts of this in order to make this look a little bit more realistic. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna drag a box across this and we're gonna select this hidden geometry. Then we're gonna activate joint push pull, specifically the first option here, or this blue option that says joint push pull, we're gonna use that to thicken this object. So what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna select the option for joint push pull. And in this case, I have face selection surface selected. It doesn't seem to matter all that much. I've had some issues in the past where this picks up everything in this object when I do this. But for right now, I'm just uh, picking the option for surface. If for whatever reason this whole thing push pulls, then maybe try the face by face option. But the other thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure this is set to generate as a group. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna thicken this, and if we set this to um, generate as a group, what this is gonna do is it'll create this thickened geometry as a separate group as opposed to destructively editing the object that we had there before, because then we wouldn't be able to go back and work with it later. And so once you have that selected, you're just gonna click and drag, and you're just gonna drag that out a little bit. And then you're gonna let up on this. And you can see how what that does is that actually comes in here and that push pulls this out so that you have kind of a you have a thickened edge where your icing is going to be and I'm gonna go ahead and click exit tool so now we've created our icing on here so now what I want to do in this case is first of all if you move this up and down you can see how this has been created uh, independently of your geometry down below I, I like that because if you wanted to go in and maybe redo this later or um, anything like that you haven't actually changed your original geometry so I, I like that for working with this well now what we're gonna do and this is kind of an optional step but it really makes everything look a little bit more realistic is we're gonna go in with an extension in this case I'm using vertex tools I'm not a hundred percent sure you might be able to do this just by 
selecting the geometry, but you can see how that kind of messes up your quads in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use an extension from TomTom called Vertex Tools. What Vertex Tools does is that's actually an editor in here designed to let you edit vertices while maintaining quad geometry inside your models. And so what we want to do in this case is we're going to go in and we're going to select, whoops, don't want to do that. What this allows you to do is this allows you to select your vertices inside your object individually. And so the, the vertices are wherever the lines kind of intersect like this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and I'm just going to kind of hold the shift key. I'm just going to randomly select vertices around this perimeter. And what we're going to do is we're going to use vertex tools in order to move these vertices down. And I don't know why these are selected. Let's go ahead and unselect these. Um, or deselect these. But what we're doing in this case is we're selecting these vertices and we're actually going to use this to move these up and down. So I'm going to click and drag on this blue icon right here and you can see what that does is that lets me move these up and down to make this look a little bit more um, realistic. I'm also going to go back and turn perspective back on because when you get the clipping like that that's usually because you're in parallel projection mode. And so I'm just going to do that a couple more times on this back side really quick. And there we go. So all we've done is we've gone in there and we've taken these vertices and we move them up and down to make this look more realistic. You could do that on the interior as well. You can see I got one of these a little bit over here. I'm not going to worry about that too much for right now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to subdivide this. So subdivision is when you use an extension that subdivides all of your faces or it makes them into smaller faces. Um, so it kind of divides them to make them look smoother. And so for this, I'm going to use the extension sub D, which is also an extension from TomTom. Tom. And note, by the way, there is a cost associated with each one of these. Um, I don't remember exactly what it is. They're not super expensive extensions. But what sub D allows you to do is if I toggle subdivision on, you can see how this goes in here and this actually divides my faces up to make them look smoother. And so what that means is if I was to turn hidden geometry off, if I turn subdivision back off, you can see this is what I had before. And then when I click on this, this actually smooths this to look really smooth. So now what I have is icing on top of my donut. And you can see how this actually looks like icing because of the way this, uh, this gets subdivided in here. And so now what we wanna do is and so you can see how since this is separate, you could come in here with a different color, whatever you wanted that to be. You could make this icing look however you want it to look. Um, because it's separate, you can definitely do that. And then the other thing we want to do is we want to use a couple more extensions in order to basically scatter sprinkles across the top of this donut. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're actually going to draw a cylinder off to the side like this. And if you think about the way that a sprinkle looks, it's basically a cylinder with a pair of spheres or half spheres off the end. So I'm just gonna draw a half sphere or a half circle. Using the arc tool, I'm gonna draw a line to fill this in and then I'm just gonna click on this face, activate the follow me tool and click on this face here in order to extrude that to create our end. And then all we have to do is depending on how long you want these to be, you could either copy the end of this sphere or you could copy the whole thing. In this case, I'm just gonna select the whole thing and I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode in order to create a copy of this. And then I'll use the scale tool to flip it or if you like using uh, the flip along options, you can do that. And then I'm just gonna move this back right here. And so if you were really worried about solid modeling and stuff, you could come in here and delete this face on the inside. I'm not super worried about that, but I guess I went in and did that anyway. Um, but now what we have is we have this big shape that looks kind of like a sprinkle. Um, it's a little longer than I want it to be, so I'm just gonna select this end piece. And I'm gonna move this closer. You can see how that kind of lets me edit that. And then we're also going to shrink it down because it's way too big. So I'm just going to use the uh, scale tool in order to do that. 
And then before we spray this on our donut, what I want to do is I want to create a couple components. And so in this case, I'm going to click on component and we'll just call this sprinkle one. And I'm going to add a color to it. And then we're going to make a copy of it using the move tool in copy mode. And we're going to right click on it and we're going to make this unique so that they're no longer linked. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to create a couple more different sprinkles. So we'll make this one red. We'll make this one green. And we'll make this one white. So now we have four different colored sprinkles that we're gonna drop on top of this face. And so in order to do that, we're gonna use an extension called Component Spray. So what Component Spray does is it allows you to randomly place objects on a face in SketchUp. And so in order to do that, we're gonna double click inside our group that contains our icing and we're gonna click on this face. And then we're gonna activate component spray. And so when you bring this up, it's gonna give you a bunch of different options. And sometimes this shows up just white on my computer screen and if I just drag it off and back up, then it doesn't show up as white anymore. You can actually read it. But I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna select my different sprinkle options. So these are my four sprinkles. Those are the components we wanna spray on this face. And now we're gonna click this drop down, and we're gonna go down to selected faces. So that's telling it where we want to spray those. And you could set these on a different layer, like for example, you know, we're not gonna do that right now, but we could create a layer for sprinkles if we wanted to. And so the pressure option is gonna adjust how many sprinkles are created. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and say probably nine or 10%. And then for now, I want them all to be the same size. I don't want those to be bigger and smaller that you could select that and adjust the scaling. And then the only other thing that we're gonna make sure that we check is the option for keep vertical. And so then, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the option for spray. And that's gonna take a minute. You can see how that takes a second to think. And you can see how this actually doesn't look very good right now. And the reason why is because we shouldn't have selected that option for keep vertical. Um, keep vertical basically takes these and maintains their um, rotation along the blue axis. So we're actually gonna undo this. We're gonna click on component spray again. And in this case, we're gonna click no on keep vertical. And we're gonna click spray. And so you can see how now this actually took the, these and it placed them along this face inside your object. And so those look fine. Those look fine, but they look a little bit too uniform for me. So they're not quite doing what I want them to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use one more extension. And by the way, Component Spray is free, and this last extension is also free. And I will link to all of these in the notes down below. But the last extension we're gonna use is called CLF Scale and Rotate. And that's an extension from Chris Fulmer. And what that allows you to do is that allows you to select objects and scale and rotate them either uniformly or randomly. So in this case, I'm gonna select all of my sprinkles. I'll deselect my face here. And then we're just gonna go up to extensions, Chris Fulmer tools, and we're gonna do scale and rotate multiple. And we're gonna pick the last option for scale and rotate randomly. And what that's gonna ask us to do is that's gonna ask us how we want to scale these. In this case, I'm gonna leave this along the axis. I'm gonna set my scale factor to one because I don't want this to randomly adjust the size. And then I'm gonna set my rotations and I'm gonna set my minimum rotation at zero and my maximum rotation at 180 degrees. And then we're gonna click okay. And what this does is that randomly rotates all of these different sprinkles inside your object so that they look like they've been randomly placed, like this has been dipped. 
And then if you wanted to, you could come in here and rescale this to whatever size you want, things like that. So I guess the answer was yes, you can also do that in SketchUp. Um, thanks a lot to Andrew Price for his original great video on how to do this in Blender. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you know you could do this with extensions? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.